So uh, I'm going to talk about context-aware location assessment. So for everyone who has no clue what it is, it's deep-rooted in augmented reality. So this is an augmented reality session. Um, we're talking about koalas, like the koala bear. Um, for the ones of you who have heard me talk about the topics before, I like to rage about definitions. Because I think today in the industry, we, we have so many, so many things. Let me tell you an anecdote. So we have VR, AR, uh, XR, NR, and all the other things. And we are an augmented reality tech company based in Germany doing augmented reality technologies and games on that. And I get regular invites from the German government telling me, Christina, could you please come as our VR expert? I don't do VR, people. And this is totally different. But nevertheless, we have a big problem out there because people mix it up all the time. So let's, let's cover some basics. So we have a real big division in the industry when it comes to augmented reality games at the moment. So you see on the one hand side, I think we all know it, it's Pokemon Go. And I think lots of people of you think, yeah, <laughs> Pokemon Go, yeah, nice try, Christina. This is a location-based game. Yes, it has this one AR element, but why is it actually advertised as an augmented reality game? We're talking about that. And we have on the other side the so-called real augmented reality games where you have your camera open and you see this epic beauty coming, sitting on your, on your desk or sitting on a screen and you can interact with it. And yeah, this is more what, what things think augmented reality should be. But actually, I think a mixture of all of that is the true thing. Um, a very, very long time I felt with rooting for AR as, well, I'm a bit the ugly, pimply sister of VR because I was treated so badly all the time. No one really believed in AR and location-based doesn't work and etc. etc. And then there came this super huge day, Pokemon totally hit off. And I thought, ha, I'm not pimply anymore. But that wasn't true because everyone told me then, no, Christina, Pokemon Go was only a success only because it had this fabulous IP, Pokemon. This is never repeatable. And what we have seen for quite a long time, and quite a long time in this industry, mobile, two years, it took us two years until the next projects, bigger project in this genre came up. So, I'm really happy that in 2018, we now not only have Pokemon, but we have Jurassic World and uh, Walking Dead, and I sneaked Fightlings in our game. So these are all, um, and there are games out there which are doing fabulous numbers. So it's not that Pokemon Go was the only hit out there which could cash out on, on, the, on the players, but there are other ones. And now I'm really not the pimply little sister anymore, hopefully. So, what I would like to talk about in the first instance, and then we're coming to... So, what I want to talk about is what AR is really about. So, I looked up the definition. Again, I really like to talk about definitions because they define the way how we're thinking. At the moment, augmented reality is defined as a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on a user's view of the real world, thus providing a composite view. In other words, we open the camera and show a texture. Or we open the camera and show a texture at a specific geolocation. Or we point the camera at a specific object and the phone is telling me that, in this case, it is a cup. Boring. Sorry to say that. I don't want to flame. I'm super impressed by the games out there. But the point is, the big problem is, with my, cam my, my phone telling me that the cup in front of me is a cup, is not value adding at all. My eyes already processed that, and that is not interesting. Another thing, having a texture on a geolocation, or a texture just spawning behind my camera, uh, in front of my camera picture, is not value adding. It doesn't give me any context. It's just a texture. So, okay, this I like a bit more. But 
what if we open our minds a bit and we are saying augmented reality is not a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on a user's view of the real world, but augmented reality is a technology which enables any digital product to be influenced by the real world. So saying digital product is influenced by the real world is able to react on real world happenstances. And maybe even the influence doesn't only have to be the computer generated image. So the game is not only reacting in a way it's showing me an image, but it could also be on any feature of the app. So any feature of your app could react to the real world. And maybe even vice versa, so that the digital product is influencing the real world, but this is maybe too big. So, if we think about augmented reality in that way, a vision like that is possible. If we restrict us to the former definition, something like that will never happen. So this is actually the vision I'm having when I'm talking about augmented reality. I am, with my company, more bordering on the location-based augmented reality side than the other, but the context-aware location assessment I'm talking about now is maybe influencing both. So the smarty pants of you will maybe think, yeah, well, Christina, to pull something like that off, why not just integrate Google Maps or maybe a weather service? Again, it took other companies to pull something off like Pokemon Go over two years. And this is not due to the fact that it's super easy to just do a draw call to Google Maps and then have the whole map and all the stuff you need for such a game. So what we're doing, or what we started to build over four years ago, is the Koala engine, which basically is a one-stop shop for any kind of real-world data in the world. So we, of course, have geolocation, time, and weather. But we also factor in what's in your surroundings. What are the moon phases, transportation, aviation data, nautic, uh, local events, uh, historic information. We know the fact that you're standing in front of an apple tree in the real world. And this apple tree, you can harvest for free because it's on public ground. We know that when there is a plane going over your head going to Honolulu and is done by Lufthansa. We could even react on you sitting in a train having a five minutes delay. Whatever is out there in the information, we get it on one platform. So how it all works is pretty simple. So there is the website. So it's open for any third developer. So we're not keeping it to ourselves, but we're licensing that away. So basically what you, what you need to do to get the ground basis, the ground data for everything you need, you can just go to our website, subscribe, build your project, click together all the context and all the information you need for your own project, include our API in your project, and then leave your credit card. You pay per monthly active user of your app. But that's enough of the sales pitch. So things you need to consider when you want to make the whole world your playground. You need the whole world to fill in automatically. So all the information, be it weather, be it transportation, be it surroundings, be it you want to know all the supermarkets of the world, this needs to be there automatically worldwide. Another thing which is super important, you don't want to cater per hand for different countries. So you need a service which helps you um, which helps you figure out that there is the potato day in, in the US, whereas there's a pie day somewhere else, and Christmas is for everyone, I don't know. So this needs to be covered. What needs to be covered is that you have areas which are restricted. So imagine your game, and your super epic loot box is spawning on an active railway, and the train is five minutes away. So you don't want that to happen, or even when you talk about specific countries. In one country, it might be okay that people are running around a church with uh, a phone in their hand. Other, other countries would go crazy because of that. So all this you have to factor in. Examples where we use the technology is we're spawning um, the big champion of the graveyard at night in some countries, not in all. Um, on a cemetery at night with a full moon and when it's stormy weather, for example. 
uh, we have a use case where we use the information that a person, it's all opt-in, is in a gambling hall for a, specific, for a specific amount of time and he gets a distress call. He sends, the phone is automatically sending a distress call to his sponsor. And we also use it to recognize street signs and combine it with, uh, with data, um, traffic data. So for example, that you can, can show statistics on how many accidents happen here and why it is really reasonable that you only are allowed to drive 100 uh, kmh, you would say in German, at this point and not drive faster. So one other thing you have to take into account when playing with the real world, when playing with everything, you want to have two things. You want to have specific locations where your app is reacting on. So like Pokestops, a, a specific landmark where you want people to go, or a supermarket or a restaurant. But maybe you don't want to make them walk. Maybe you don't want to be a geolocation-based game or a, a walking game, maybe you want to be something else, then you need to have the solution to define areas. So imagine how cool it would be if you do a Mafia Wars game and you could actually, where, where you build your big Imperium and it is actually grounded, founded on real-world crime data. Sorry for the picture, it's a bit creepy. And this is bringing me back to the part how the digital world could maybe influence the real world. So the cool thing is, what we can also do is we can let you place your digital creations, be it a present for another player, be it a message, or being it the awesome epic farm you just built. You can put it somewhere in the real world, like here. And you can watch it in augmented reality every time you go here. And if a friend of you who, who's also playing the game could also see it here. So you could put your, your uh, digital creation and scatter them around the world. And this leaves lots of different opportunities. Why this is, why this is all about uh, or important, two things. Augmented reality is coming and it's getting huge. We have the opportunity to make every landmark, every real world happenstance, a retention feature. So the moment it starts raining, it could be super valuable for you to enter your app because, hey, everything on your farm is growing faster now. Or, um, and another point, yeah, this is, this is cool. The moment Pokemon Go introduced weather into Pokemon Go so that um, the Pokemons reacted, or the spawns reacted on, on rain, on actual weather, they saw a 20% increase in retention. So these kinds of real-world contexts are a real retention driver. And the other thing is, you can be really healthy with your player, because you have the option here of making little nuances, little things players usually hide. You can make them nice again, because not many people like to wait in the supermarket line, but actually because you're in a supermarket, something could happen in your app. Or no one likes the rain, and it could be awesome. So you can redefine special circumstances for players. Yeah, I wanted to make the picture better. Um, so last time when I was here and was talking about the topic, I didn't bring any kind of video. So this time, and, and everyone flamed me for that. So this time I brought one. So if we've got enough time, then the longer one. Three minutes, this is what we're currently working on. Hi guys, we are creating a game called Farmstead. Farmstead is a mobile, free to play, very social, augmented reality farming game. And the reason we are creating this game is that every time a farming game has launched on a new platform, whether it was Farmville on Facebook or Heyday on early smart devices, it's been a huge hit. And so we are going to create the very first augmented reality farming game. You start by creating your farm in the real world, and what you can harvest on your farm depends on your actual real world setting. So for example, you can find mushrooms in forest areas, you can find fish in rivers, and so on. You can expand your own farm to adjacent squares, and you can build more structures and plant more crops on those squares. Once you have your farm, you can plant crops, and you can gather from all the squares adjacent to where you're standing. If you want to gather outside those squares, you'll need to send a worker, which is the game's very own energy mechanic. What you gather on your farm, you can sell either to supermarkets 
Or you can choose to craft into higher level goods which you can sell to restaurants, which is the game's quest system. Since restaurants require more refined goods, they'll pay you more for them, but they take longer to create and are more difficult. Supplying restaurants and stores gives you coins, which in turn help you expand your farm even further. In Farmstead, it also makes sense to explore the world outside your farm, because everywhere you go, you can find seeds and young animals, which you can then bring back to your farm and plant. You do this by playing a game of luck, which is influenced by your actual context. Whether it's weather, time, your location, the moon phases, the season, or any other factor. And by the way, your farm itself is also influenced by these contexts. So if it starts raining, for example, your crops will grow faster. And if the moon is full, your workers harvest faster because they can't sleep. Farmstead also has a classic augmented reality component, which is that players can point their camera at a flower, and we will identify the flower for them and let them collect bees. So with each new flower you find, you can collect a ton of bees, which you can bring back to your farm and use to terraform the land, create rare crops, and grow rare resources. The game will also show you places where you can actually harvest real crops and fruit in real life. These are based on publicly available crops and trees in our database. So the last part of the game is the social features. The first of these is community gardens. Every single real world park will be a community garden where players will have to work together to clear weeds and plant crops, and then every player can come and collect crops from the same garden. You'll also be able to visit your friends' farms to see what they're building and growing. And finally, every restaurant will have a leaderboard where players can compete to be the top provider to their favorite restaurants. So thank you for watching this brief intro to Farmstead. We hope you enjoyed it, and we're very excited to work on this game. That's it for me. Very good.